three, do, how BSA are going to play this, whether they want to slam their bot lane as early as possible and secure Rika counter pick, or whether they want to flip it around. Yeah, this, uh, like I say, quite surprising for me. Would have expected BDS Academy to leave the Renata open, take it on 4-4 themselves, and quite happily move through the rest of the draft as was, having counter pick for Rika as well in that mid lane. Not going to be the case, though. We've seen Rika default quite happily to blind picking as well, though. He has taken things like the Victor into the mid lane, uh, a fair few times is a fairly safe pick. So if they want some semblance of bot side control, they can uh, prioritize Erdote's counter pick in the bot lane. That is a world that we could see as well. I think this Karma uh, actually uh, a bit of a flex, obviously, between mid and support preserves that flex pick, preserves the counter pick, and now Vitality V have to pick a mid lane and a support that are comfortable into Karma. I, I believe it was uh, Oplon who was paying for them who did play a, a few games of this Karma mid lane. It was actually mm. when... Oplon went on their sort of mini hot streak and were able to take a, a couple of wins and maybe one of those teams that could have made a Solari-esque run uh, towards the playoffs. Ultimately, not to be in the end, though, as Ari, probably the safest answer that you can you can go for right now. You don't know what's going to go on with this karma, so you lock something that does well into kind of most things. And Diplex played a fair amount of Ari through his career as well, through this split in particular, certainly. Up there with the champions played. And we get to see what Vitality be round out their bot lane with. This is a, a nice pairing. I'd like to see it picked up. The Wukong plus Rakan engage duo. Something that you can cause a lot of chaos with in the back line. And it sets up so well for Diplex for the barrels from Sagenda as well. A cannon barrage over the top of all of this. The team fight from Vitality be looking very scary. I, I mean, absolutely. I mean, all, all the tools that you've sort of just listed there means that for BDSA, whilst they've got the makings of a strong team fight composition for themselves, this this R5 needs to be something that is going to assist them in standing up in that regard. And I think Lissandra is, is pretty good. Yeah, back to the MSI patch where Ari was this uh, associated as his best mid laner, but had the RNG counter pick uh, of Xiaohu taking the Lissandra into Ari pretty much every single time it was given to them. So you get cleanse forced on both the AD carry and the mid laner here. Uh, it means that Diplex not going to have as much roam potential with that teleport. Uh, this is one of the, like, it is literally just Lissandra attacks. Instead of having to yeah. go for QSS, it's you build a cleanse and you're normally okay. You, you should be all right. Obviously, you can cleanse the initial CC and then that additional tenacity for any follow-up CC, which is going to come through, I think is really undervalued in terms of that summoner spell. But mm -hmm. Rudu, Ru we've got two teams who are at the top of the table and I feel like the compositions that they put together for themselves are actually kind of similar. You, you've got a lot of pick potential coming out of this mid lane, a lot of zone control uh, that these top laners can provide, and then the ability for the Lee Sin and the Wukong to skirmish is almost unmatched. Yeah, I think the early game, I'm just going to give the edge over to BDS Academy. With the Gnar, with the Lissandra, with the Lee Sin, they have just more overall CC uh, and damage. They've got a lot of CC coming out of both of their solo laners, if, of course, BDS Academy fight around Adam's Meganar timing. The Lee Sin just a slightly better skirmisher in the early stages than the Wukong as well. Even pre-level 6, I think that they have a fairly decent time of things. And GP, kind of notorious as a very strong level 1 champion, yeah. then immediately bad again. <laughs> and then when we get to the late game, again, returns to a very scary powerful. Yeah, it's, a, it's a very sort of weird power curve, but we're going to have to see if it can be utilized effectively. A battle for second place right at the top of the table. Vitality B versus BDS Academy, coming right up. Let's go, everybody, as we see Boris tinkering away in his shop. Oh, his back looked a little bit weird here. BDS Academy on the red side. Body shaming Boris. I'm not body shaming Boris. His back, he was just like, he clicked his back there. He looked a little bit uncomfortable. As uh, BDSA want to uh, cause some discomfort for Vitality B, a team who have been at the top of the standings for oh so long, and BDS Academy have ooh, made ooh, a scrap. impressive run so far in the latter half of their split and they may be looking to claim an advantage early on into this game with this invade <laughs> level one karma absolute giga chat energy from air Dotty right here i have mantra q you have level one aphelios what are you going to do i will happily step up to you try and generate a slight vision advantage it's not going to be the case Dante holds the ward in fact and just flexes the muscles also a little bit 
um, and, and nothing else comes from this. There's two wards placed uh, across the map thus far, I believe. The one placed that you can see a dot A on, and then that second one just gone down. In the tri brush right now, for, like we say, the early stages, eyes on Shio. Uh, the one game that we saw BDS Academy uh, you know, have a really good showing on on the early stage of the season was with Shio on this lease in. I think that if we see BDS Academy utilize some great timings around Meganar, around level 6s, even earlier than level 6s, against this ultimately weaker composition from Vitality B, they will have a chance uh, that they being BDS Academy here, have a chance at generating some nice early leads, which, if you have those small leads, will do so much work for you when we get to the late game, because that's when we anticipate this is going to be the explosive game mm. that we've that, that we've associated with these two teams. So closely contested in the standing. Start the season, both of them having different ups, different downs, all coming down to this final game, essentially, to lock second seed. Yeah, and, and to lock your spot in EU Masters as well, I, I think, importantly, too. Being in that top two means that you are guaranteed at least a play in space. And obviously both of these teams have uh, made waves uh, on the international stage before, but uh, we want the opportunity to do something similar again. Adete and Crowley having the lion's share in terms of pressure in this bot side. Double range versus ranged and whatever the heck we're counting Rakan as. This is kind <laughs> of what you expect. It is, it is. And, you know, to touch quickly back on, you know, what you just mentioned about the international experience, right? BDS Academy, ultimately a fairly weak showing at EU Masters this spring. Mm. Something that they were, certainly will look to change, to redeem themselves from. Vitality B taking themselves to a grueling five-game series against the eventual EU Masters champions in the semi-finals. Both of these teams are eager to get back to that international stage and prove that they are not just a team that is good in the LFL, but that are good across the continent. And, and for the most part, Rudy, I feel like a team that has been good in the LFL is generally good across the continent as... Oh, yeah. Uh, the three, three, three masters in a row. Yes, it's one organization, but it's the entire LFL. It still counts, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Still counts everybody. I could, I could, I could hear the Carmine Court fans typing. I can hear them. Yeah, you could. You could <laughs> hear the, the blue wall was approaching right there. As uh, maybe a red wall approaching in the bot lane as BDS Academy already making a journey to the bottom half of the map. Cleanse on Jesper is not going to buy any time at all as it's first blood secured for Shio and Jack Troll will be number oh. two. Oh, gorgeous. From Shio leaving that kill to Crowny to the way they juggled the aggro management. That was absolutely beautiful. Huge wave missed under the turret now by Jesper and Jack Troll. Three summoner spells burned in that bot lane versus just the two burned and their two combat sums for BDS Academy. So they still have some safety on that top side. All that's expended is a TP for Adam. He was able to withstand any pressures put in that top lane. And it wasn't where I was expecting. I will level with you. It wasn't how I was expecting <laughs> the elite to be generated by BDS Academy. But boy, did they get one. Yeah, and there are a team that can do things that are... A little bit unexpected. A lot of their wins have been characterized by them going maybe over-aggressive, but having the hands to make it work and uh, making that early prey, getting themselves a pretty significant advantage on this Jinx in the early stages is going to feel great. Is this the game that Adam doesn't get player of the game? Maybe. <laughs> so far, on a yes or no. So, so far, 10 out of 10. Um, and 5 CS down to a GP is not a great way to start it off, but... Um, oh, can't give him play of yeah, the game. Yeah, can't give him play. He always has a, he always has a funny way of, of sneaking in and becoming incredibly relevant. That's uh, true. In skirmishes, in team fights, what have you. And now I, I want to quickly talk about, because I maybe did GP a little bit of a disservice, honestly. The, the Nar versus GP matchup. And level 1, obviously very good for Gangplank. Mm. Now that he's got Sheen as well, yes. it's back to being very good again. If there, if there was that little dip in the early stages of the lane when he reached, you know, having Nar more, a uh, few more abilities. Now Sagenda has the Sheen. There's nothing really that Adam can do for the time being. Because Sagenda outranges him with parlay and just wins trades. <laughs> it's it's quite uh, simple. You, you, you do just win trades. And the, the thing about GP is that he can apply Sheen, Sheen in an AoE, which is the kind of yes. crazy thing. Those barrels apply on hit effects. So when you parlay into that, you've got the bonus parlay damage. You've got the Sheen on top as well. And if it crits... It hurts his Adam, feeling like he has to flash away from that barrel. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure I agree with that one, but it was. I think that the the important point is that if he doesn't flash away from the barrel, he takes a whole heaping load of damage regardless, mm. and loses a lot of control, or not even a lot of control. 
Well, loses a lot of minions in the lane. That was a flash to stay him in the laning phase. It wasn't a flash that prevented death. It's one that keeps him relevant in the lane. And Adam's always been this player that has had a sort of unique view on how to play the laning phase. Um, Shigenda, nothing unique about this GT trading pattern. It's just kind of what he does. <laughs> Endlessly walking walk up, up with the buys. Yeah, walk up Q. Oh, I did it, guys. I did it. Oh, I'm so good at Gangplank. Holy moly. Look at these combos. He is a difficult champion when we, when we get a little bit later. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> to be that. fair. <laughs> and that was the perfect example. He just fails the gang uh, the, the barrel combo. Adam. Adam is six. About to go mega here. Hopping forward. The cannon barrage is going to be used by Shigenda, but it's not enough to prevent the Nar going into that mega form. Orange is eaten, and it looks K for Shigenda. Adam doesn't have flash available. Neither does the GP. A little bit of rig around the Rosie. Ooh. Neither top laner goes down as Shio claims the Drake. Awkward spacing, honestly, for Sagenda. Flashing to dodge out on the boulder toss, which could have been enough to take it down, but doesn't stay in range to find the final parlay, which would have found the kill. Both of these top laners really scrapping it out to the maximum in this top side. Not giving any advantage over either way, though. And surprisingly enough, the flash advantage that Sagenda had doesn't end up coming through and reaping any rewards, unfortunately. Uh, in this bot side... BDS Academy, obviously they had that early dive. As I don't think he's being jumped onto here. A fair chunk of damage onto this Karma, but we are seeing the repeat. Rika down here, level seven now on the Lissandra, Ooh. but Diplex is also roaming over. Skins is in the area. I think Vitality B have sussed this one out. BDS take back away. Yeah, they get the sense of deja vu, but this time they have the power to stop it. Prevent that roam down to the bot lane and keep Desper and Jackal still relevant at the very least. This spot lane. Not ahead by any means. Oh. They are 20 CS down, but uh, keeping them within semblance of parity. And I mean, that's the sort of 20 CS lead that has been mirrored on the top side of the map with Shigenda having the advantage over Adam continuously in these trades. And the mid lane has been relatively even, apart from those assists that Rika has got for themselves off that bot lane roam. Neither of these men have, have been able to find a significant advantage over the other. I want to quickly talk about this top lane matchup once again because the keystones are actually very important as to why the lane has played out the way it is. Lethal Tempo for the Gnar is a much more scaling oriented room. There are very few instances where Adam is going to get full impact out of the Lethal Tempo in the laning phase versus Sagenda going for the Grasp of the Undying, which is literally the lane kingdom room. Getting health back pretty much every single time you parlay somebody, if you're timing it right with your Grasp procs, makes it very difficult for this Gnar to trade back in and is such a powerful reason why the Gnar is behind. He could have gone for the fleet footwork, could have opted into something a little more safe in that top lane, but instead opted to the late game scaling and opted to be able to match the GP a little bit later on. Does though, however, have to suffer the consequences of his early game choices. Yeah, and Shigenda with that sort of like shove, that priority in the uh, top lane means that Vitality B feel relatively safe for clearing out this Herald. Obviously, Jack Troll moving up to support the rest of his team and BDSA responding with a little incursion into the bot side by Talitapi Jungle, trying to steal away some camps and claim some gold back. Quite rightly, honestly. Don't want to get nothing for so or don't want to give something for nothing. They only steal away the Raptors, uh, and they do deny a little bit of experience down on the bot side, more so through the threat of diving bot lane, more so than anything else. You could see how far back Jesper was playing right there. You may be thinking, oh, well, he's, you know, walking back to lane. Nope, he was, he was just there. He was scared. He didn't want to get dove. Mm. So it is a, a double-edged sword here for Vitality B, stocking into their top lane. And it depends where they put this Rift Herald because Jeskler is dying down here, essentially. Mm. Down 40 farm right now, really getting starved out of resources. There's a world where we see the Herald used to try and offset some of that deficit. But there's also a world where Vitality B just say, Jessica, suck it up, pal. You're going to be powerful later on. But we've got a GP who's good now. And it's a really difficult decision to make because... In terms of AD carry, so often the, the winning AD carry is simply the AD carry that has more gold. Um, and as it stands, Crowning has more gold, although Jeskla may be getting some more soon as a huge commitment coming through from BDS Academy on the bottom half of the map. But Crowny is able to walk away with his tail between his legs, but crucially, alive. Yes, walking still is the important point. And Shio and Erdote actually playing that incredibly well. Uh, from Shio kicking away the Wukong and setting his ADC up to leave, and from Erdote also blocking the Moonlight Vigil, knowing that that, you know, with the bit fairly decent AoE, he just runs up, marks it, makes sure that it can't hit onto Crowny, and saves the life of his ADC. Really good support from the duo of BDS right there. Yeah, Rika 
toying with the idea of uh, making a play into the pot side. Uh, Jagenda does have a control ward here, um, and with Adam so moving forward aggressively, the Glacial Path is going to be far followed. The Orange is already used, and the CC chain can really come through from BDS Academy now. Nowhere for Shigenda to go. And the 10-time MVP Adam picks up his first kill of the game. Ooh, Ooh I feel bad for Shigenda. Yeah. That was not nice to watch. Mm. That's one of those where you click the death recap and just go, I was CC'd the entire duration of the time I took damage. Nice. Um, but this is really big for BDS Academy. Can't under undersell how much this is actually going to do for them. Uh, we saw an attempted play onto the strong side of BDS Academy by Vitality B. They didn't get the kill. Mm. They weren't able to shut down the threat. Crowny lived and is still pumping out numbers in the bot lane. Whereas on the top side, they looked for Sagenda to take down the gangpack who'd been bullying out Adam. And now that advantage in the top lane is going to be vastly mitigated. Yeah, as uh, BDSA playing on their strong side can take down the Drake as well. Mountain going to be the soul of choice for this game. And with two Drakes taken at 12 minutes, BDS Academy legitimately have a win condition in that. If they can get that soul early, we've not yet seen the power of an Elder today, but we all know that it is something that does exist. <laughs> something always very fun about yeah. uh, Nars that hop aggressively and never really get anything particularly uh, outrageous out of it. But with that Mountain Soul, obviously going to be giving a nice little shield to both of these teams. Neither one of them have that powerful tank from which you get real stat bonuses. Uh, and Mountain Drakes as well. Uh, individually, not necessarily the greatest. You do want a couple to stack up. Nice little charm in the mid lane. Uh, the next. But with the Mountain Drakes specifically, you do tend to want three or four. And they do tend to only work on the Drakes, or on the champions with the souls that have those big hitting numbers, yeah. I want to reiterate. You're not going to complain about the shield, but it's not like you've got a mouth fight uh, mm -hmm. in, in this game or an Ornal oh, or, yeah. or, or something that can just, just really be obnoxious with that. Vitality B summoning the Rift Herald in the mid lane, but that tower is basically full HP. Now it's basically half yeah. HP, but it's still there. Yeah, but our question was, where are they going to use this Rift Herald, right? Are they going to use it on their strong side of Sagenda to get that lead going, or are they going to try and use it with Jeskler to... Give him a little bit more gold in the game, and ultimately it's neither. It's a bit extra injection into Diplex, who, for me, has been a very strong part of the Vitality B squad. I want to reiterate the fact that his Swain got banned in the first phase of yeah. bans because of how many picks he was able to take, because of simply how effective he is at looking for those late game engagements. I don't mind putting gold into Diplex ever. It's just not one of the, the eventualities that yeah. we mentioned. I, I... <laughs> I think you're in sort of two minds in it because Diplex the player, absolutely. I want to give this guy as much gold as possible. But Ari, in professional play especially, has always been a bit more of an enabler. When she gets fed, she can deal ridiculous amounts of damage. And when people build correctly, <coughs> uh, she she can be. But the Everfrost here signifies that Diplex is probably going to be a bit more focused on setting up for the likes of Shigena and for Jeskla. So that gold maybe could have been used a bit more optimally. Hey, double-edged sword once again. Yes. Uh, I, I think, obviously, with Diplex being the only magic damage source, there is an argument for him going for a lot more magic damage. Ill path, the Ludens. But also, there's no tanks on BDS Academy, so there's nobody particularly stacking a ton of armor, which would make that increased magic pen oh so useful. I've not got another counter point. You win. Thank you. Thank you. I will allow the Everfrost in this instance. <laughs> I will permit it, as uh, Jessica is not permitted to walk to his lane without taking 20% uh, of his HP in damage. First blood tower for Crowny as uh, Dota is going to be caught out. The Everfrost already paying dividends, securing a kill for Jeskla. Yeah, I wouldn't have got that kill with Ludens. Absolutely no way. Uh, Crowny <laughs> going to be charmed up here, but Jeskla is very, very far away. Diplex really? moving over. No Spirit Rush available for the Ari, and Crowny can just walk away. Flash is available for Diplex. Doesn't go for it. Only has his own flash uh, as well. Okay, he, he's going for it. He's going for it. The minion wave is there, though. That's going to block the charm if he can't quite land it. The Everfrost flashed away from that. Oh. Beautiful. That's why you give gold to Diplex. That is exactly what we wanted to see from the Vitality B mid laner. Given resources from your jungle, transition around the map and make the plays happen with that gold in your back pocket. Gets accelerated up to the tier two boots in the Everfrost very early on in the game. Moves down to the bot side, takes down Crowny. I feel so bad as an ADC. You're walking to your tier two turret. 
but you are an ADC and you don't have mobility. Unlucky kid, get a different champion because you cannot outrun an Ari. Uh, it's just how it be. And Jeskler is going to be very grateful to pick up this bot lane tower. Try and equalize the gold a little bit between these AD carries as meanwhile BDS Academy mm. focusing their attention a bit more towards this top side. They have backed away now, but Shigenda is still a little bit far from his turret. Adam not going to be able to take it out, but uh, does a fair bit of damage. In an absolute scrap so far this game, Jesper. So that injection of gold from the turret is going to feel very nice in his back pocket. Still behind by a roughly, oh, so far, exactly a zeal's amount of gold in terms of effective items built up. But has both of those summoner spells ready to go? 25 seconds on the dragon as well. We're seeing Adam make his way down to the bot side. And this is going to be sacrificing his top turret at any cost. Sagenda doesn't have TP, so can't make his way down unless he starts walking as he is right now. That troll knocking up Shio, who is going to be charmed, is going to be rooted, is going to be forced back. Rika actually looking for the Rakan, but the engage isn't synced up for the members of BDS Academy. Now Skeen's forced to flash back as well. So many cooldowns being burnt, no one going down. GT priority here, BDS Academy sticking that Herald down in the mid lane is going to give them uh, a little bit of access. But you can see Sagenda fighting out on this top side. Adam going forward here, Mega's yeah, ready. Yeah, that lethal tempo is really starting to put it to work. So the charm is going to connect onto the Nara as he flashes back, knocks Jatrol into the lane before he falls down a one for one, two engage rates taken off the board and BDS Academy claimed a trade. <laughs> Sorry, about four different cooldowns yeah. slammed over that wall as the Drake went down and I was like, holy moly. Uh, that, could, that could have very easily stolen it had it been a little bit earlier. A trade of one for one. Uh, it's the dragon in exchange, or the dragon and a kill on the support in exchange for just a kill on your top lane. And now this top tier one turret, Sagenda, walked all the, way, all the way down to the bot lane and TP'd back up to this top side to secure the turret. And stick around for this wave, but I want to draw your eyes to the minimap. There's a deep TP ward available. Uh, Adam doesn't have his. You're moving through, but I don't know that there's going to be enough. Yeah, there are pings going down. This is probably a little, yeah, a little bit too far for uh, Shio. It forces Shigenda to take a, a little bit more time before he resets, which is good. And Crowny, just a moment of free time, yeah. able to take out this mid lane tower, but he's probably going to pay for it with their life. Yet yeah, nowhere to go. A second kill of the game for Skeens. Four to four on the board. Gold even as well. Questionable. And we'll have to see if that ends up costing Crowny more than they gained. Because overall... At present, that's an even trade. And I dare, dare say that that's BDS Academy actually coming out on top. The map pressure that you get for a tier one turret worth much more than just the 300 gold that you get from the turret. Uh, but it looks like they're actually going to get a lot more across the board as Adam now the one in trouble in the top side. Oh, he is able to kill that barrel, but he's already used the hop and doesn't have flash available. The lethal tempo actually dealing a fair bit of damage down onto Shigenda. But the nah, will be run down in the end. Another kill for Skeens. And this time... Well, never mind. This also <laughs> traded back for a turret. So it is two turrets for two kills. And BDS Academy, they're going to be quite happy that they're securing this gold across multiple members. This is, again, weirdly enough, more gold injected into Crowny. You get a lot of local gold, but you do still get, uh, you know, passive global gold. It's not passive, it's active when you take the turrets. You get global gold for taking down objectives. Mm. And Crowny going to be the recipient of a nice hundred gold or so from those two turrets being taken across the board. Probably not just in time. I don't think that there's going to be enough of an accelerant towards that Infinity Edge come this soul fight, which we're barreling towards, it feels like. 2 minutes 50 on that Mountain Soul. Crucial item spikes to be hit are going to be that Infinity Edge if Crowning can get there in time. The Jesper, whatever these two long swords go into, those have been in his inventory for a while, so when he goes back to base, he can pick up a second item there. Should put the ADCs largely at Paris. I like what we just saw from Crowny there, popping the chompers over the wall. If you didn't know, those actually grant vision. So doing a little bit of scouting, trying to see where Jack Troll is, trying to see where this Rakan is going to be attempting to make plays onto the Jinx, who as it stands is the, the big carry, I, I feel like, for BDS Academy. has already got that Phantom Dancer, and whilst the Infinity Edge is, is a little way away, you're still accelerated, and importantly, you're still ahead of Jeskla. Yeah, from all the times that BDS Academy showed their face bot lane, you are quite right to assert that, that Crowny is the carry. He is the one that BDS Academy put a lot of stock into. Adam got one gank up in that top side and it's just made a kill of that Drake fight a little bit earlier on. But all of the stock, all of the early game resources that BDS Academy had went into this former LEC AD carry. Looking to cement BDS Academy as a second seed and as a team that are locked in the EU Masters. This is the, the sort of pressure on Crown. He obviously has a lot of fans that are going to be happy, hopey, 
hoping rather that he can carry through this game. Yeah, there's, a, there's a real hit with uh, with Rich. His uh, AD carry player has been pretty damn good uh, so far this game. Big improvement as well. Big improvement. Big improvement. Because earlier on in the split, Prowney had his misfortunes. He was, and I don't mean that in the champion sense, I mean in the, oh, I've extended for a wave and I'm now 06. Yeah, oh, he looked yeah. a little bit twitchy at points. He did indeed look a bit twitchy. Um, uh, honest, honestly, honestly, it was getting quite severe. Yeah, you really don't want to jinx him, though. I was going to do that one. I was going to do that one. No, I had that one. That oh. one was ready. Oh, honestly, oh it's real easy, like, you know, like to come up mm. with these AD carry puns. Yeah, not wrong. Just starting to make these jokes too hard, honestly. <laughs> I think I took all the good ones, mate. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Vitality B looking to take away members of BDS Academy. A Dote forced Ooh. to run away. The charm going wide from Diplex. A rare mistake from the Vitality B mid laner. Good dodge, honestly, from Erdog, but that's the re-engage. Yeah, here comes Rika. Oh, that was a perfectly timed Zonyas, and Diplex is dead. Shio now tanking up in the front line. Still the Gordra good enough to keep no. alive, but Shigenda will claim his life. A mid lane up for a jungler with the Mountain Drake, the Mountain Soul for BDS Academy in 10 seconds time. Oh, very, very scary. Uh, Crowny, BDS Academy, they're going to need to zone away. They're going to take another fight. Don't flip this Drake. Don't give it into the hands the jungler who has got smite remember neither of these two champions that are dead are going to have tps that cleanse force actually having a lot of prior right here bds academy if they want this drake they need to force a fight adam needs to find an engage this is sandra ulti up in five ten seconds could find a flank look at oh Rika. look at rika on the side adam's about to time out of this mega now though he's gonna use it he's right too late. jumps in no he's already got mini but it may Crowley, though. no matter as crowley he's free hitting the rockets the damage bds academy's ad carry is taking so over well. this fight minuscule health bars but a health bar still as jack troll Run. forced away from the fight rika may be looking for something here the dodge on the super mega death rocket there's probably about 200 hp between ah. all of these champions as diplex rejoins goes forward a double kill for the re make that a triple kill as crowny goes back to base too long it was just too delayed bds academy spent all this time setting up around the objective adam flashes in but hits mininar at just the wrong time and then crowny who had put so much gold into these crucial items was being the massive carry slams his face into a barrel adam uses the stopwatch to buy times look at crowny's health bar he's free hitting free hitting and then all of a sudden into a barrel boom <laughs> Sagenda hurts. Sagenda living was crucial. And Crowley positioned himself to take down that gangplank. Unfortunately, didn't get the hits in. One more would have signed, sealed, and delivered. A soul, an ace, and a complete wipe for BDS Academy. But those are the margins. Those are the differences that we talk about in League of Legends. Diplex really benefiting from those additional spirit rush charges on kill. Able to go forward. Able to take down multiple members of BDS Academy. As, oh, no, Shio. You're on the wrong so side of the rift, buddy. There's nowhere for you to go. Yeah, jump over the wall as much as you like. You still get shot in the head. That was not a control ward uh, for Shio, unfortunately. That was the stopwatch active, which means the Drake now goes over to Vitality B, and it could mean a lot more, actually. Uh, with the state of the game, I don't think the Vitality B are actually going to head over to the Baron. We saw this uh, actually in game number one, uh, game ward. They quickly got a Baron, uh, or they got a kill on the enemy jungler about this time, and they simply took the Baron and won the game. Uh, not going to be the case this time round for BDS Academy. So, Tepid Waters uh, mm. sort of reassured once again. Tension building around these fights. Yeah, it feels like the first time today that we've had a game at this point which has been this even. The team's so, so equally matched. Obviously, Vitality B are the ones who have managed to actually claim uh, the, the gold advantage minor as though it may be but i think the key thing is that they're the ones who, who won that last fight they're the ones who feel like the momentum is starting to come in their favor just just barely and i think it's it, it, is all, it is close oh oh charm goodbye. from diplex once again but shio alive for a millisecond longer shigenda on a killing spree and this is what we're talking about rudu vitality beat are just more willing to pull the trigger and they're also at this stage their champions, are, or specifically their jungle champions, are just a bit better. It's very difficult for Shio to navigate this late game on the Lee Sin. You don't have the things, you don't have the tools that Wukong has to disengage and engage so easily. Cyclone and Clone 
can be so good if you are a caught out or if you're looking for an engage when Lee Sin is so much more intensive to get those engages down easily and make that big wave, make that big sudden impact. They play out of schemes right now. He's got two items on the Wukong. He's got that Kenpunk Chainsword as well, which means anti-heal pretty much across the team. Yeah. Uh, of BDS Academy, Wukong's such a good applicator of that previous wounds. Oh yeah, you're going with the Cyclone, your clone is, is spinning around as well, and then all of a sudden, BDS Academy's healing is about half as effective. Jack Troll there, just using that barrier uh, to get it away from his spell book. Uh, interesting choice, actually, for the Recon. You don't see that too often, but does offer a bit more flexibility. He wants cleanse later on. He wants cleanse yeah. for a big team fight. <laughs> um, and you can't take cleanse on, you can take cleanse on Recon. But it's a bit, it's a bit difficult uh, mm. to get away with and to justify when you could, you know, go for an exhaust, go for an ignite, something like that, which gives you just simply, actually, the ability to lay. There's a little bit of a lull state now. Uh, nothing to contest too heavily for both of these teams. I think the key thing is Crowny. In that last fight, obviously, getting the hit down by that gangplank barrel was massive. But if he doesn't get hit by that, EDS Academy probably win the fight. They probably take the Drake, and this game looks. A hell of a lot more favored towards them at this point. Jack Troll and Skeens may be caught out as Rika. Actually, the only one of BDS Academy to go forward. It does catch out the Wu Collins. He's looking for the engage. Jack Troll flying forward as well. The Lissandra is already dead as Shigeta is on a rampage. And BDS Academy cannot get into the fight. Too far forward, unfortunately. And Rika looking for the engage onto Skeens. They're looking for the first target, but by the time the, the ulti comes down from Lissandra, Crowning has got so far zoned away. You talked about the zone control, the vitality we have. All Sagenda has to do is put the cannon barrage between the Jinx and the target that Rika selects. And unless the Jinx wants to walk through that and set up for easy barrels, there's no way there's any DPS coming down from the BDS Academy squad. I think that fighting around these big open spaces like the mid lane is always going to uh, be a railroad to failure. They need to try and start taking fights in choke points. And that's not easy when you're playing up against Rakan Wukong GP, but I think that your comp as well just demands it. Yeah. Again, uh, pretty good at reminding people that they are mortal. Three items on this gangplank. A 700 gold bounty on their head. And the scaling threat from Vitality B well and truly online. He's only getting stronger as more items are on top of him. And it really becomes a battle between Shigenda and Crowny as to who can carry harder. Makes you question really why the Gnar was given so much priority in this game if you don't ban away the Gangplank because Sagenda has been known for his Gangplank this entire season throughout more of his career as well. The the notion of giving Gangplank over when you, you know, taking the Gnar early doors just feels unfounded and right now working towards that yeah. the edge. Looking for a flank here as Vitality BR pushing up in the mid lane. Adam in the mini now, looking pretty exhausted right now. He's eventually going to be able to build up that Rage. As Jack Troll, using the Shirelius, not able to find anything more with it. 15 seconds until this Mountain Drake and it's BDS Academy that have got first move. Yeah, they are the ones in control of the river, but it means that Vitality B are going to have the ones in control of mid lane. They need to be careful for flanks. Everybody is looking for different flank angles. Rika's looking for one way in, Diplex is looking for another. Oh, they're looking for schemes here. The Wukong caught out on the wrong side of the fight, but the Cyclone is enough to keep them alive for a moment longer. Adam going to chase them down. Flash forward to take out that jungler as Shigenda in a little bit of a scary position, potentially. It's actually BDS Academy that are in. Uh, in between a rock and a hard place Drake. at this place. They need to get onto this Drake. Yes, they've got 4v5 right now, and the longer they wait, the more Ooh, they're going to get chipped away at. Hit by a barrel, charmed, shot in the head, dead. Gatrol now looking forward as BDS Academy are trying to fight themselves Ooh. out of a really rough situation. Note like that from Adam is not going to help them out as Vitality B are just corralling them in their jungle. A double knock up from Jack Troll as Adam isn't quite able to find the engage again. Crowny raining down the rockets, but they are so split up. Adam is taken low. Adam not quite going to be taken down as the flashback. Shigenda is unstoppable. Vitality B finding the fight, but BDS Academy looking to rush down Drake. I don't think they can get this. Diplex is doing enough. Jack Troll from one side. Can they get this in time? Geo still has the spot. He is going to be able to claim it. That is Mountain Soul in favor of BDS Academy. And their jungler will pay for it. Maybe right, with man. his life. Actually, on the wrong side of things. They're facing. They don't care. They want to just go and do the Baron right now. They have the advantage. Adam's dead with no TP. Shio is going to die one way or the other. So they can uh, get this jungle is he? kill. Is he? Yes. Is he? Is he? Surely. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, mm, is he? 
Is, is he? Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> hey, he bought a lot of time. He bought a lot of time. He did. And I think he's done just enough to deter the initial Baron from Vitality D. I still think that with those resets coming through, Deathcap picked up for Diplex, Infinity Edge picked up for Jasper. Now as they head to the Baron, they've got 30 seconds on Shio. The, the window where we had power points for Crowny over Jester, it's gone. It's elapsed. Mm. And with GP on four items, it doesn't even matter. Yeah. Baron has been started up by Vitality B, but BDS Academy with a couple of members around Crowny's the pit going to be spotting it out, but Crowny is nowhere near. Had to reset to get that additional itemization, but isn't going to be here when his team needs him. BDS Academy think better than going too far forward. The Super Mega Death Rocket is going to go late. Gonna go wide and purple buff for the blue side team. Good call. Good call from both squads right there. BDS Academy not sacrificing their lives for a Baron that they're never gonna get. Vitality be making the most of the fact that they've just taken down the enemy jungler. Good uh, good expenditure on both sides. Now Vitality B have this three minute window where if they don't get anything from this Baron, it'll be worthwhile for BDS Academy because they got the soul. It, it is this trade of soul or Baron. We have to wait and see what Vitality D can make the most of. Big thing for me here is is looking at Segenda's inventory. It's another item. It's the Infinity mm -hmm. Edge here for the Gangplank. Above 60% crit. So that passive from the Infinity Edge is going to be unlocked. And, oh, well, 1,474 damage from the barrels. A big old 75% crit chance. Three mm. out of four chances that he hits the crit and... Something that uh, I feel like went under the radar um, is that crit strike isn't just a flat chance. It is, it, it is repetitive. Oh, so yeah. you're, more, you're less likely to crit if you have just crit, and you're more likely to crit if you haven't crit. Obviously, that's all within the realms of the 75% chance. Yeah. It, it, it's one of those so, weird things where like people are quite bad at actually telling when something is completely random. So you mm -hmm. make it less random to make it seem more random, more consistent, I guess, at that 75% marker. Vitality B pushing on this bot lane in here, but no one here for BDS Academy is really going to be able to stop them. Rika, self-ulting, which is not what you want to be doing on the Lissandra, goes into the Zonyas, keep themselves alive for a little bit longer, but Shigena is already dominating and Skeen's diving forward, getting kicked back as Shio. Very, very low on the lease in. Vitality B take inhibitor, rotate away towards the mid lane. Great timing for the Vitality B squad. No Mega for Adam it means that they're quite happy to go for that fight and somehow, some way, this Mountain Soul not quite having the impact that it would have maybe thought so. We talked about this uh, a little bit earlier on that Mountain Soul, this game in particular, not the be all and end all. Mm. BDS Academy doesn't just auto win them the game. Yes, it's nice, but it's not the, like I say, the defining factor that's going to turn their game. Vitality B, they do the hard work. They break open the base and the Baron about to wear off 30 seconds left on that. And we get to see what else they can manage. Uh, the Baron, like I say, worn off. The Baron up on the board in three minutes. It's the Elder that's the next mm. point of contest. Yeah. And I mean, if BDS Academy are able to somehow steal that Elder away, there's definitely a chance that they can they could take over fights because Jinx at this point in the game, being a reset-based champion, you only need to get that first kill for the team fight to kind of go very heavily in your favor, but you may not have the opportunity to as Shio is forced to kick Jack Troll away. And of course, a double hop out as well. His Meganar timing is looking good, but Skeen's got a great flank angle. Ordered out by Adam, spotting the Wukong there. Rika coming in from the bot side. Remember, inhibitor down. BDS Academy are on a timer. They have to make a play happen before that bot wave crashes in, otherwise they are going to start to lose structures in their face. It's agenda having TP as well. They go a little bit too long and step a little too, too far forward with having that wave crash in. To get TP'd on and just lose the game like that. I, I think the small solace though for BDS Academy is that it is the bot lane inhibitor that has been taken out. You kind of want to pressurize around there anyway with this elder coming up in a, a minute and 15 seconds. Obviously, it's not great losing in a hit, but if it had to be one, this isn't the worst. Exactly. Uh, it's on the right side of the map for the objective that is the crucial, that for the objective of focus right now. Obviously, uh, in another minute's time, when the elder's gone down, uh, that in here probably not going to be the most defining factor as to what's important in the game. Uh, most likely, it's going to be whoever's warranted that elder buff and requested that for themselves. Vitality be just playing this nice and nice and controlled late game right here. They've got themselves to a late game stage. 
Three and a half items on Aphelios, three items on Ari, but the most important thing is a full build Sagenda now, Navori Quick Blades finished for the Gangplank. He is absolutely ready to rock and roll. Trying to get into this river is going to be so difficult because if Sagenda is marking it, you can just put a barrel down. And then what do you do? If you don't have Jinx there to kill it, it's going to absolutely ruin you. Yeah. And, th and those barrels hit like a truck. I'm going to walk into Shigenda. A little bit tankier than the other members of BDS Academy, so can eat those parlays a little bit more freely. That but Q uh, half HP is crowning. Yeah, that, that, that Q does actually half HP crowning. As uh, Jatra once again popping the Shirelias and BDS Academy showing the necessary respect, backing away towards the Baron Pit as Adam is on a flank, but crucially in that mini Nar form and isn't going to be mega for a fair while. Has to have the time to tick down. Elder spawn. Vitality B gonna start this one up. Jessler can pretty much solo this. Skeens jumping onto Adam, but the Cyclone only onto one. Maybe not the most effective usage. Crowny not being hit by that barrel, getting hit by that one though. And Shigenda kind of just 1v2ing on the other side of the map. It might not matter though, as Jack Troll looking for Rika and Diplex doesn't quite find the charm. The Rakan dashing back over the wall as the Elder still full HP. Neither of the teams focusing it down yet. Crowny has a red buff, so he'll be able to regen with that passive life regeneration. Look at the bot lane. Great observations here. They wait too long. That base is going to fall. Jigenda has TP if he wants to go for an absolute hero play. Standing in base. It's and yes, in. it's happening. They're going for it. Vitality B are flipping their chance at seventh place. At second place, red team secures the elder. That's going to be going in favor of BDS Academy. The fight is surely theirs, but we need to check on the base. We need to see what damage Shigenda is doing. None at all. Adam has got back in time, and the GP is going to be losing this 1v1 to the burn. Have BDS Academy just claimed victory from the jewels of defeat? They have done a very good job of putting themselves in that right hand spot. It is not all done just yet, but Elder plus Baron is a very good stepping stone. They're going to be able to get that Baron. They deny the base from falling. Adam, right to go back. And it was the Elder differential right there. Whoever wins that smite wins the fight and probably wins the fight in the base as well. Because Adam was down to blinking health bar at the end of that fight. If Sagenda has Elder, he loses that yeah. hands down. And the fight around the Baron, around the Drake as well in the bot side. Came down to minuscule margins if Jester has his hands on an Elder right there. Oh, I, 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 it, it came down to a smite. And Shio could have just done everything. And look at that. The inhib in that bot lane has respawned for BDS Academy. No super minion waves on the side of Vitality B are going to be marching through the rift for a little while. And, and Rude, dude, honestly, that was kind of perplexing from Vitality B. They've been so measured. They've been so controlled in this game. But they miscalculate and it costs them dearly. Honestly... I don't even want to give them that, that bad a, a rep. It is literally, if they win the smite, they win the game. If they lose it, then they lose the game, right? It was, it is weird to just point up the game like this, but now they have to battle against Elder, against Baron, and see whether or not they've got the win condition to back it up. Elder buff five item jinx is something that very few people can deal with. The inhib tower falls down. BDS Academy have taken down this bot lane inhib now, and keep going they might keep just going. look to keep going adam is in mega for a little while now as Barrage is going to be used on the wave elder still on the backs of bds academy it's just about getting crowny into space into a couple of auto attacks on the enemy members that super mega death rocket is going to apply the elder bug to multiple people and now jeskla has to go back to base dexas turret number one has been falling down in favor of bds academy and the Ophelios is dead and ultimate onto the wukong onto the backline to keep crowning alive as he could dish out the damage vitality b are fighting back there with shio is diving in a shutdown secured by shigenda the gp is still alive and bds academy don't feel like they can end the game just yet they need to grab this minion wave, wave and go more forward they've got a minute left still on this baron middle cot three members all three members of vitality have to do so much work needs to be hero plays coming out from diplex hero plays coming out from shigenda and they will not be given the opportunity rika goes golden crowny hits the dengus and bds academy are your number two team secure their spot in eu masters and they say if you want this position you got to pry it from our cold dead hands never going into that night they manage just barely to win out the fight around the elder all off the back of shio smite they win the fight in the base in the in the back in the dragon pit and they do just enough the bare minimum to get the win but the win is on the board and we said that bds academy when they went